This is a CBC podcast. Friends, it's me, Caitlin Prest, host of Radiotopia's The Heart, and now The Shadows, a new CBC podcast. The show is about the quest for the ideal of romantic love and how complicated that quest is. The question of whether that idea is still worth fighting for if it's obsolete. The show's fiction. It's like that saying, fiction is the lie by which we tell the truth. The Shadows is out now. Subscribe on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Hi there, I'm Alan Neal, and welcome to the All in a Day podcast, where every weekday we try to pick one conversation from today's edition of All in a Day. So... Here's today's. I use my outside voice because I have no choice. The barn that I was raised in was constructed out of noise. And now I'm all torn up because my buttercup up and gone and left me. Said she finally had enough. Left me here to ruminate on all she can't admit and all she can't explain. I like fun describing how things break apart. That would be the undefeatliest, unbreak partable, they might be giants. Now on their 36th year of making music, as usual with the lyrics of they might be giants, you can find yourself landing on any line and pondering it for way too long. In my case, it was the flashcard with the word speltify. Because in their nearly four decades of song, they've had their share of descriptive words in the past. The card with the cartoon nurse in 1994's Destination Moon. The postcard with the stamp and words are like the card tricks in the I'm a Coward video. Not to mention the card mentioned here. Now you've been maxing out my card. Gave me that credit by me gifts with my own hands. That'll be in their Dial-A-Song cover of Destiny's Child. More on Dial-A-Song in a moment. And of course, the giant cue cards for sing-alongs that they first launched in their 1980s shows of spectacle along with the paper mache monster mitts and French bread fencing. As they told CBC in 1990, We learned pretty early on that the audience generally respond much more to whatever we did live on stage. I mean, you could stand there going, you know, and people will be much more excited than the most complicated thing on tape. Will there be giant cue cards with the word Steltify when they perform tonight at Bronson Center? Will they say, kink, 
John Flansburg from They Might Be Giants is with me in studio. John <laughs> Linnell is somewhere behind him on the highway. We don't know. Uh, hi, John. Yes, he is. He's trailing somewhere. <laughs> Hopefully scanning the dial for this interview. Alan, thank you so much. for the, You know, uh, short of being on the uh, Gilbert Gottfried podcast, I can't imagine a more complete and, uh, <laughs> and thorough uh, introduction. That was very th extremely thoughtful and also uh, highly produced considering you're uh, a one-man band there. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's completely so are, are there are there still cue cards for single There are no uh not 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 in our uh, touring show uh, on occasion in recent well I'm done I didn't know it wasn't that recent we have had we have had uh, um, uh, shows where if you brought an acoustic guitar you could play uh, a horse with we would play a horse with no name and we would play. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the other song. We would play Mr. Tambourine Man with all the verses on from the Bob Dylan wow. version. No, people had to stay is, in their seats, right? They didn't, didn't no, all rush no, no, the stage. No, these were all standing venues. Uh, so what we would do is we would have... Sometimes we would be in venues that had balconies, and all the guitar people with the guitars would be in the balcony. <laughs> and uh, we tried to do it on a regular basis. It's a re it's actually a quite a quite a majestic thing to hear just the uh, the dull kind of like thrum of yeah. of. Uh, 75 acoustic guitars all in relative, <laughs> relative tuning tune. proximity to one another. But, you know, it, it sounds like something, you know? It sounds like sort of like putting a, like a beehive on your head. When I... <laughs> <laughs> exactly the acoustic feel you've you always just, longed for. Well, yeah, it's, it's exciting at first. But it has that then... element of danger that, that sometimes that, that they might be giant shows would have when there were the, the monster mitts and the French loaves of bread well, we were, we, were, so we were trying to take the element of danger out of it with the horse with no name because that only has two chords. So exactly. Very, you you're, not very, gonna, you're not going to go wrong. Yeah. With that. I, have, have you figured out why a word like stultify sticks in your mind, how that word ends up making the cut for the song? Well, uh, the song... Um, uh, the lyric to that song is very is very much a sort of a straightforward breakup kind of a song. You know, it's it's kind of a you know she she left me and and she wasn't particularly nice about it kind of lyric. Yes. Um, Your buttercup. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it plays it plays on. Uh, I get you know somebody was was sort of. Uh, querying us about the nature of the lyric of that song because there's so many things in the song that are sort of kind of country bumpkin-y kind of uh, mm -hmm. references. The barn that you grew up in. Yeah, yeah. Buttercup, et cetera. Yeah, and, um, and um, I'm not really sure what that impulse comes from, but I think a lot of it is just, it was sort of, uh, you know... We don't write a lot of love songs, although we do. I mean, I think probably the closest we get are sort of the rev kind of re a lot of the revenge topics of like Elvis Costello songs, or you know, and sometimes they're just like straight up romantic, you know, positive love songs. But I think with that one, once there was one thing that seemed kind of country bumpkin-y, it just kind of kept on going. But the stultify, 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 that's not country uh, bumpkin-y at all. That's not, no, that's true. I don't know where the stultify came. I mean, I guess I guess it's just about the sort of how, how confounded you can feel yeah. when you've been ditched. <laughs> it's, I, I'm, if I take you even further back here to another card lyric, this is about picking another card from the back of the pile. <laughs> is washing that, over him now. This I've is... heard that song a million times. Um, <laughs> uh, that is John Linnell's old band, The Mundanes. The that Mundanes. was their, their, their one of... Uh, 45 they were they were sort of a power pop band out of uh, Providence Rhode Island and uh, the so that the songwriter was a fellow named John Andrews who now um, you might if you were an avid follower of, of Beavis and Butthead or King of the Hill or any sort of Mike Judge production you would probably recognize his name as as one of the uh, producers of the show he, he worked with him for a long time he's a big deal in TV animation and and television in general in LA now but he was the, he was the songwriter when when Linnell was in the mundanes do you yes. think that he had a sense of of the kind of band he wanted to be in eventually do you think that they, they I think he had a, I think he had a very strong sense of the band he wanted to be in at the time yeah. um 
I mean, we actually formed They Might Be Giants very much at, uh, you know, people who are friends with bands or people who are in bands are probably from, very familiar with the idea of, like, the little brother band yeah. of, you know, they'll be the little, sometimes they are literally the little brothers or it'll be, like, someone in the band who has uh, a very specific passion for, you know, Brez Prado songs and wants to do their <laughs> Brez Prado project on the side. They Might Be Giants was... Uh, very much the little brother band of the mundanes. Um, John was brought in as a side man, and it was already a group of friends who were like the inner circle of the band. And um, he, he learned a lot. I, I sort of vicariously learned a lot about be you know what bands did. I mean, even down to like uh, how to not lean over with your rear end. Facing the audience, I see. Okay. which All is right. something you know, Posture an in, invaluable yeah. piece of information for anyone <laughs> who's going to be on stage. Um, <laughs> Study that tonight right. at the Bronson Center. Watch right, how, right. That's Watch how we avoid stage. completely, you know, bend, bending over. But um, no, uh, he, uh, you know, they were a really successful band, and um, but they also uh, were trying to sort of going for the brass ring. I mean, there was there were, it was a big band. And they needed to kind of keep moving forward, or uh, it would not be worthwhile for all the people involved. Like they needed to get signed, they needed to be real, and they needed to make money. And they, they had a PA and lights and and all this stuff. And they all moved to New York to make it big. And those kinds of things um, sort of I think they just changed the energy of a band. You know, yeah. you have to kind of focus on on a different. Trajectory. I mean, basically, you're saying like we are ambitious. We want right. to. We want to make it in this. We want to get somewhere with this project. And I think that kind of informed John and me in the sense that we wanted to sort of free ourselves from. We did not want that. We did not. Well, we just felt like you know maybe there's another way to do it. And I have to say, you know, just recently, uh, yesterday or yesterday morning, uh, the founder of a band called The Residents, who are a band from San Francisco, just passed away. And um, I can't say, I can't say how much the existence of the band The Residents influenced They Might Be Giants just as a construct. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were a faceless band that did not tour at the time. Yeah. And the idea of simply making music that was not, you know, clearly in the most direct way, ego driven, you know, it wasn't about creating, I mean, they created a mysterious persona, but that was, but there wasn't much to know about there. And I mean, this, this is what is so interesting about you every step of the way is that it has been going outside the system, outside of the normal, for lack of a better term, ego driven way of, of making music, including the dial -a song feature where, I mean, for people unfamiliar with this, people can call up an answering machine, hear a new song or cover you created like the, mm -hmm. the Bills, Bills, Bills cover that we played a little bit of there. In 1987, the New York Times did a piece where it was explained, and they wrote, The group now attracts a nationwide audience, long distance. People can tell us immediately after hearing it what they thought of the song, Mr. Flansburg said. When they start hanging up in the middle, Mr. Linnell added, You know the song's not working. Last Friday at Dorinka, the basement apartment turned by a private club on the Lower East Side, Mr. Flansburg introduced a relatively new song, and a listener interrupted him, I heard it already on the message. <laughs> well, there you go. What, what is, what is I, he didn't need to hear it again. Yeah, he's done. Yeah. He's, he heard that already. I'm out. <laughs> Why? Why did you bring back the dial song? Uh, I just, as an aside, the other night we've been tra we've been traveling across Canada, and uh, I'm not sure what what city we were in, but it was we were playing in in like a, a, a well, all the all the aisles were clear because it was like a theater setup, and um, we started playing the song "Birdhouse in Your Soul," which is probably course, like yeah. one of our best known songs, and right as it started, someone in the in the middle aisle just like just tore out of the room just <laughs> tore, left left the theater and i thought you know it, what an interesting time <laughs> to split um i know that it's, one it's like i don't need to hear this one <laughs> i'm tired of this band i'm you know i don't know why i spent you know 27 dollars on this they're playing their hit <laughs> What a bunch of sellouts. Another mental note, do not uh, watch when you leave the Bronson Center <laughs> no, because no, you they, can, the band you're, you're will free, notice. You're free to leave any time. I just it just it just was so notable because it's like I couldn't think of any thing any 
part of the show that would be the least likely to generate somebody leaving. Um, but there have been a lot of orderly aisles kept, so it's very easy to keep track of people. But as you were saying, I've, I've already the, the I forgot your I, I only have a minute left. You, why bring oh. back the dialogue? Oh, well, I mean, it's very, you know, of course, like everything in the 21st century, it's it's all very different, yet in some ways kind of the same. I mean, it's, uh, you know, we're not, you know, we're sort of advocates for what we do. We're not the most, uh, we're not like a stock band. You, we kind of have to find our audience. And um, it was just a way to keep things sort of hyperactive on social media. And uh, that seems like the only way you're going to get any traction these days is sort of having an ever present, ever, ever refreshing, uh, um, you know, profile. So it was, it would seem like a, it seemed like an apt uh, moment in the culture. It's, I, I, I am so happy to hear that one can still dial in and get these. these oh yeah. Dogs. Well, and you can also you know, get it online. It's on, on YouTube and everywhere you go. And at the Bronson center tonight where you cannot, there is no balconies to bring your guitars to. No. Uh, but I do have two tickets to give away. If you can tell me the name of the band, that John Linnell was once in, that I played a clip of, all in a day, at cbc.ca. Email us by 4 p.m. John, thank you so much. This is the most in-depth in. interview I've done in 10 minutes. In a, this is, I've, I feel like more hard information about They Might Be Giants has been dispensed in these brief brief seconds than <laughs> well, thank hours on the, the, post this, stations. This is, this is, thank you for 36 this years of music. Like, concentrate. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the All in a Day podcast. More stories from the show are available on our website, cbc.ca slash all in a day. For more CBC podcasts, go to cbc.ca slash podcasts.